buddies. So today we're going to talk about um, treating fungus on your succulents just in case you do get it. Um, if you'll notice over here, um, I've been keeping a close eye on my plants lately because the temperatures outside in the middle of summer right now, we've been reaching up to the 90s and then um, with like a 70-75% humidity. And then, you know, right in the middle of the day, it would, it would rain for like five minutes, causing it to be even hotter instead of actually completely cooling it off. And for succulents, that is a recipe for rot. So I've been keeping a close eye on my plants lately. I do keep them um, on the dry side when it's too hot, just, you know, to help prevent rot. And I don't water them until they are completely dry and thirsty. So if you'll notice over here, I've been, I've been watching this plant for a few weeks now. Okay, if you'll notice over here, there's a, there's a little spot right there. So I was thinking, okay, maybe it's just sunburn because this is in full sun with a shade cloth over it, but it is in full sun eight hours a day. Um, I thought it was just sunburn, so I was like, oh, okay, there's, you know, there's no reason for it to be fungus because it's not being overwatered. But then, a couple days later, I noticed this spot over here, okay? And then on this plant, I am trying to show it. Well, there it is. And then on this plant, this spot over here appeared in a couple of days again. And then there's also this spot right there in the bottom, if you can see it, right there. And then there's another tiny little spot which is being covered by this leaf, so you can't see it. So sunburn will also sort of look like that, but normally it's just on a leaf or two, or you know, it's spread out a little bit more throughout the plant. When I've noticed that there are those black circular spots spreading, see them right there, spreading through the leaves, now I know for sure that it is some type of fungus. Um, why high humidity and high heat outdoors? Um, it probably didn't spread too fast, like I said, because this plant, I have been keeping it very dry, just kind of letting the leaves um, dry out slowly, because I'd rather do that than cause the plant to rot. So the fungicide that I'm using is right here. It's called, sorry, the camera is faced up front, but it's called um, the Conil? The Conil? Yeah, the Conal fungicide, and it's ready to use. It's in the liquid form. Um, if you guys can't find this brand, there are. It's by Garden Tech, but there are other brands that pretty much do the same thing. This, they ha they all have the same active ingredients. Make sure to read all the labels um, in the back and follow instructions. So the instructions for this is that you can spot treat and spray the whole plant if you want to, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to destroy her farina. So what I normally do is I spot treat these spots that you see um, on her on her leaves. I can't tell which one it is that you guys can see that one. I spot treat those instead and then I mix some into the water that I will water the plant into. Make sure, now I'm doing this now because I waited for a while, I didn't do it right away. Make sure that your plant is ready to be watered when you want to treat uh, for fungus. Um, one way to tell if it's ready to water is when you press on the leaves like this. You see how the, the leaf is actually puckered. It's not too full. It has thinned out. And when I press on it, it wrinkles a little bit. It's not watery or mushy. Um, we have, uh, I think, episode number 10, when to water succulents. If you guys want to watch my video where I go into detail for when it is exactly the right time to water and when not to water succulents but understanding the conditions of their leaves. That is episode number 10 on our channel. So this is ready to receive some water but the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to spray some of the fungicide like so 
Um, this is just some container. I, I just need a little bit of the fungicide. And then I have a tiny little paintbrush over here. So just dip it in there. And then look for where the fungus is at. Which ones can you guys see? Okay. Um, sorry, I am trying to angle it so you can see it. So as you can see, I'm just going to put a thin a thin layer of it. You see where I'm applying, right? I'm just applying a thin layer of it on where the fungus is at. I have done this before. Um, it won't make that black spot go away really, but this leaf will now slowly dry off. The plant will use up its water in there, but applying the fungicide on it will kill the fungus that is already um, on the leaf. Uh, okay, that's the one I'm putting on. Will kill the fungus that is already um, on the leaf and it will stop further spread to the other leaves. So basically these leaves are goners. Um, once it has that spot, it will slowly dry off and wilt until it dies. But when you're treating for fungus, all you're pretty much treating is the leaf and you're treating it so you can stop the spread. And then here's another one. You see all those spots on my plant? That is the fungus, guys, that has already started to spread. Um, like I said, this is not the first time that I've treated for this, so I know this method does work. Um, according to the instructions of this fungicide, um, you can apply in seven-day intervals. Okay, that one. I'm not sure if that's a spot or if that's just a stress freckle color. But let's just put it there anyway, just in case it's fungus. So any, li any, any little black spot, I pretty much just apply. Um, I pretty much just apply on the leaves because I want to make sure that I get all of it. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's over here. Okay, so there. Um, you want to... Make sure that you, you get all those circular black spots if you do have these on your plants because that is the fungus itself that's going to be, that might be, that might spread. Um, actually, it will spread. If it is fungus, it will spread to the other leaves and any plants that may be planted um, in the same pot. What I notice is that, you know, this pot could be amongst a bunch of other plants. It, it won't spread. It only spreads into the plants that are in the same pot. Um, I am trying to look for possible, more possible spots. So I have spot treated the leaves. Um, make sure to also check when you do, when you do see that stuff, make sure to also check um, the undersides of the leaves that you have. Um, I don't see any on the underside, so I will not be applying any on there. I use cinnamon to mix into the top of the soil because if you guys look it up, guys, um, cinnamon has natural antifungal properties that can kill certain types of candida um, that's present in, uh, in, in our soils. And, you know, do I think it necessarily kills the fungus? Not really kills it, but I think it helps prevent it. Or maybe it helps, uh, uh, maybe it helps uh, lessen the growth, or maybe it slows the growth. So I apply it because this way, it gives more time for my fungicide to kill whatever fungus is on there. And because it can slow down the spread of whatever fungus is on my plants. So what I do is I just spread a little bit of um, a little bit of cinnamon all over the plant here. Um, don't worry about it staining the leaves because you know as you water that cinnamon will pretty much just wash off anyway. Uh, I'm trying to get it in there. <laughs>
can't. So just put some in there. And I got it all over the little baby in the middle. Oh well, that's okay. Um, so yeah, this is what I do with cinnamon. And that's the reason why I use cinnamon. Um, some people also say it's a natural... Uh, some people use it as a rooting hormone. Um, I've tried it. Does it really make a difference? I'm not sure. But because it does have antifungal properties, when you do have a cutting and you plant it in soil, you know, if you have something that can possibly prevent rot and fungus, why not use it, right? So I have mixed some into the soil there, just on top. And then what I do with the fungicide is, um, it's right here. So what I do is I just spray. You can see it spraying, right? Oh, the leaf is in the way. There you go. I just kind of spray some around the base of the plant. Uh, like I said, guys, do this when your plant is ready to be... Can you see that, right? Okay, do this when your plant is ready to be watered. Because after spraying like this, I will be watering it into the soil. And then some in there. Um, this way, the roots can absorb uh, the fungicide with the water. So it's like giving your plant medicine. Um, you know, it takes the fungicide, it, it takes it into the roots, it gets into their actual system and tissue. And then, you know, it can start killing the fungus from within the plant and not just, you know, like a topical treatment on top, okay? So now that I did that, um, all you want to do is, here's my water, all you want to do is kind of just water that in there, the fungicide into that. You don't want to water to the point where um, you don't want to water to the point where the water seeps out of the bottom because then you'll just waste the fungicide. You just want to water it enough to wet the root ball so that it can absorb the fungicide that we have just applied. Um, this doesn't kill the plant. Um, I did this before for my Graptovaria Douglas hut. I applied, um, I applied this exact fungicide right here, the Dacono. I don't know if that's exactly how you say it, but I applied it um, to my other succulent before every seven days until the spots completely went away. So like I said, what will happen with these spots is they will stop getting bigger. They will stop spreading to the other leaves. That um, So apply it every seven days to stop the spread, but these leaves will not recover. They will slowly dry off and they will die. Um, I can remove it, but I don't want to because I know this works. I would rather the plant use up, you know, what's in there first and you know give it time to grow more new leaves so that when this does fall off the plant doesn't look all uneven um it is up to you you can just remove it if you would like to i just choose not to but um like i said this will stop the spread because i have watered the fungicide into the soil and i will do this every seven days for about four weeks um, and see if the spread has stopped if not, then I keep going. But the most important thing here is if you are treating for fungus, if you have this same problem and you treat for fungus, make sure that your, uh, your plant has been dry for quite a long time and is ready for a watering because more, more water when your plant has fungus can actually cause more fungus. So you only wanna do this when your, your plant is, readily, is ready to take in water and just completely absorb it so the soil can dry completely. The, see, look, like there's no water spill, right? I only watered it enough so that I can wet the root ball of the plant so it can drink up all that water with the fungicide. Um, now, when you apply 
fungicide to your plants. This is very important. It says on the instructions that you do not want to apply this on extremely hot days. So it is extremely hot outside and I cannot wait until the weather cools off to apply this or else my plant might actually just die. So what I'm doing is I brought it into the house. Um, you know, my AC, my, my AC, my air conditioning is on all day and I do have grow lights inside the house. So I'm just going to kind of put it, um, you know, towards the side of the grow lights that I have um, where it does get some light, but not not too much because we want it to recover. Um, I will put it outside when I am done treating for the fungus, but do not, it's okay to put it outdoors um, if you don't have a grow light inside the house. You can put it by a window inside the house or you can uh, put it outdoors, but make sure that it is only in a bright shaded area and it does not get direct sunlight. Filtered sun is okay. Um, do not let it get direct sunlight when you have the fungicide on, or at least within the first 24 hours after you applied it. After that, I think it's okay to be out in the sun again. I have another plant that I'm not sure has fungus. Um, here it is. This is our this is our original arrangement that is actually our the succulent buddies logo, and I think I might have to take it apart. And it's kind of sad that I do, but my Echeveria subsessilis morning beauty right here seems to be having a little bit of a problem. Um, this is out in full sun also, actually right next to the Reptiveria purple delight. I'm going to pull off some leaves in the bottom there, see? This only gets wet from rain. I do not water because... Like I said, in the summer, I like to keep my succulents fairly dry. And um, at this time of the year, if my succulents do rot, it's not because I overwatered. It's because of the heat and the humidity and the rains that my full sun succulents receive outdoors. And I am very concerned that this might have some type of fungus because it has been losing uh, leaves faster than I would like it to see loose leaves. Um, I expect it every summer. I really do because, you know, I already know the pattern. I have had her for uh, two and a half years now. Oh, I pulled a leaf that wasn't ready to be pulled off. But um, some of the leaves, some of the leaves in between under there look dark to me, although they are not dead. But I'm afraid there is fungus present. I made this arrangement, guys, back in January, and it has really grown a lot. Um, I'll put a picture up of how it looked in the beginning. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Such a mess. <laughs> That's okay. I can clean up the tray. So, let's see. My styrofoam over here. I recycle a lot. Um, not really going to take off too much of those of that soil because I don't want to disturb the roots too much. I just want to remove all of the dead leaves under there. That's prob That could also cause fungus. Remember guys, I told you when you can, please groom your succulents um, because it can harbor pests. It can cause fungus, and we want to prevent anything that might cause our succulents to rot. Okay, so I am looking under here. I don't see any signs of rot. Just trying to remove any dried leaves. Just to pull it out already anyway. Might as well clean it up just to improve the airflow overall under the plant. So there, okay, there, it's perfectly healthy. There are no signs of rot, which is good. But what I was concerned about, I guess it's just the heat. That's why it's losing, that's why it's losing leaves. Um, what I was concerned about is, do you see that stuff under there? I don't like that. Um, there is no rot, but 
just because we pulled her out already. This is not a necessary step for you to do, but I already pulled it out, so I'm just going to do it anyway. Because I am concerned there might be fungus, I am just going to apply the fungicide right under there. With my right under there with my little brush, I am going to apply it on the undersides of the leaves where it has these dark areas here. Um, I did see a few spiders um, on the plants, and but I didn't see any bugs, which is a good thing. But mm -hmm. like um, I'm going to show you, you know, the extra precautionary measures that I take, especially in the summer, um, you know, to prevent aphids and mealybugs. I still do get the occasional bug, but I don't. I never get an infestation because. I do a lot of preventative measures to not get any on my plants. Um, the most I get is pretty much ants. I don't know. Ants, I apply diatomaceous earth, but, you know, they Can go away for a little bit. And then it rains, and then the you know the powdered form of the diatomaceous earth. Every time it gets wet, it doesn't work. So I have to wait for the soil to dry again, and apply it to make them go away. But ants, I don't know. Ants will keep coming back no matter what, and it's just something that we unfortunately you know that we have to deal with. And so there you go. I applied that with a brush. I need a little bit more. Need a little bit more. No. And then I just apply it onto the stem as well. Um, remember, guys, when you do this, if you do decide to do it this way on your plants, please follow, uh, follow the care instructions. Um, according to the care instructions, you're supposed to actually spray it all over your plants, which I choose not to do. But instead, I treat you know, important areas or any areas that may be affected. Okay, so here you go. And then what I do is it's set in. that aside for a second. I'm sorry, my work area is dirty. And then where it was, we put a cinnamon. We put cinnamon. I'm going to put more cinnamon on top. You can tell I like cinnamon, right? I use cinnamon for cooking. I use cinnamon for my plants. But I, I, you know, I really do think they do good for the soil. They do good for the plants. It has antifungal properties, like I said. And if mixed in the soil, it can actually kill certain types of fungus. So anything that helps our plants be healthier we can add it in. I always have cinnamon. I have so many uses for it in the house. I actually use it more for my plants than in food. But I love cinnamon. There you go. So we are done with that. Um, let's get my other plant back here. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys how I treat for fungus. Now that I have applied um, the fungicide, um, the other plant right here with the Echeveria subsessilis morning beauty, I'm not going to uh, water fungicide into the soil because there was actually no fungus there. I mean, not like this one where it has the, where it has these spots here. Okay, so it doesn't have that. So I just applied it. I applied it on the stem and the underside of the leaves to prevent fungus just in case since we already pulled it out. And then um, with this one, so with these two planters now, with these two pots, you want to make sure after applying fungicide that they do not go out into direct sunlight until about 24 hours later. And um, do not apply the fungicide when it is extremely hot outdoors. So you want to wait till about nighttime or 
you want to just do it inside the house and then keep them inside until the next day and place them in a bright shaded area where they can get um, filtered sunlight okay but not no direct sun so I hope this video helped you guys just in case you may be having this these problems in um, our hot humid summers so uh, yeah this is Christine from the succulent buddies don't forget to comment like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one thank you